to the Life First Podcast. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Nanashi, which is the new center for the con, uh, conflict, conflicted, confracted, conflated diva. Um, this is a level three center with the following abilities. When you grow into level three, you get three coins. Uh, it's black, by the way. When you grow into get, you get three coins. Uh, the level zero gets you two coins, which is significantly worse than getting three coins. Um, you get the constant effect of, during your attack phase, infected Signy on your opponent's field get negative 3,000. How do you infect them? Well, you enter ability, put a virus into one of your opponent's Signy zones. So basically, you choose a Signy zone for the rest of the game. When it's your specific attack phase, uh, it gets negative 3,000. Um, then it has a once per game gimmick where at the end of your turn, you can turn all of the uh, Signy face down. And then until your next uh, until your next opponent's attack step, they basically stay down. The opponents then do a uh, any of their beginning of attack step stuff they need to do. Then it's your turn, and you flip everything face up, and then they basically exist again. So it's kind of a cool way to give them like super shadow until the end of turn, if we want to call it that. Um, which means that your goal is going to be putting out some probably annoying signy for your opponent to deal with uh, when those things pop back up again. So it's a pretty good ability, um, probably the best ability on it. And then you, the negative 3,000 is sort of the most common thing that you're going to need to play with. So we built a little bit of a different deck. Now, normally you guys have seen me build um, these white, blue, black decks. They're very attrition-based. You can even kind of see that they're attrition-based based on the Super Helestia Saber and the Energy Door. But I, I swear this time it's a little bit different than that. Uh, so I picked up... The, the, the L-Rig deck is, is more or less that sort of, like, attrition-esque mindset, and it does have those effects to it, right? Like, we're still using uh, Akino Rock and Akino Bye Bye, which are just generally good stuff, uh, things to grow with. You know, they, they're very good early on, they're very good late game. Um, and I still think that this is a pretty good choice here. You very rarely get your guards out of it, but there's not a ton of Enter, um inner sinks in this deck so it's actually fine to get the uh the late game sort of like guard with this um then you got mel revise and mel Re invisible i like revise just because i like getting some enter back into the deck um but you could swap this for mel uh the other mel that i think it's mel burst the one that does uh does actually remove a signy from the field and you'd be fine with doing that as well there's quite a bit of removal in the main deck though so i don't think you necessarily need to do that super helestia saber actually in this deck is used less for getting guards and, and and lasting long term and more just for like general utility here um getting back your white signies are all utility stuff so they're either going to be used to get like to help you with the um, negative 3,000 effect, as you'll see in a second, with Yuki, uh, or they're good for the until end of turn, you know, keep your keep your field f flape down, face down. Um, and that will be for Exias, basically, to get the Exias into the field. Uh, outside of that, the black is usually going to be just damage outburst, and then the colorless is, you know, guards. You also get some more guarding effect here with the energy door, um, but realistically, it's mostly a draw card here and a vanish that's like the the two main ones is to draw cards and vanishing i don't think you necessarily need the energy but you know sometimes it's useful to have um so again this is sort of the common build that i go with with these types of colors i tried other colors i actually tried a um a blue version uh instead of white and i didn't like what i got out of it it really didn't contribute anything to the deck i tried again with a um with a uh with a with a double green version actually and a double black version the double black version had had machina which was really good but didn't necessarily work out because i mean death deck was the only thing i really gained from it i guess i could have kept energy door but then the secondary piece got a little weird and i mean you could have used um xeno cluster but it was just a strange sort of setup didn't really mesh well together i tried uh also to use uh, death deck as well but death deck didn't really work out either because it just like did the deck didn't really mill itself efficiently enough to use death deck uh, i tried a double green version as well but the 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 green assists outside of bang and and uh mel which bang and mel are virtually the same l rig as an assist doesn't really work out the 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 you know dance and the lance uh piece is actually quite good um so i tried i tried all that stuff out didn't end up 
super, super liking, liking it. Um, but it was fine. Um, inevitably I just went back to this roots where I just used white. Uh, but it did make an, a conscious effort to make the, uh, main deck different than your normal attrition deck, right? So the normal attrition deck, you'd see a lot more like, yes, it's got Exeus, but you'd see a lot more remembers, you'd see a lot more like things that stop damage in the, um, in the main deck. This doesn't actually have that. This is much more aggressive than you think. It truly is mid-range, but it is, it is more of an offensive mid-range. Um, the real crux of why we chose these colors are actually, um, Quinn is the number one reason why we chose blue, or sorry, green in here. Although, you know, Kiyosumi and also the, uh, Toko actually helps out a lot too. Um, but the Quinn's sort of like, explains what those are really it's at the beginning of each attack phase you swap the two signies on the opponent's field um whenever one of your opponent's signies has been swapped into a different field you get negative 2000 power till end of turn um this pairs really nicely with um nanashi's ability to give negative 3000 on your attack step so if you swap something over not only do you get negative 3000 but you also get a negative 2000 so you can kill 5000 stuff which is pretty good but you can actually do a double lane opening by going like, okay, so it's the attack phase, um, I've, I've swapped something with this, let's say, Kayasumi, or, or let's say I swap something with Yuki. Um, I, I put something, there's also Toko here, right? So you, you swap something into the lane that's going to get negative 3,000. Uh, it's maybe a, a level 1 negative 3,000, then it dies due to the effect of this when you enter your attack phase. Uh, then what ends up happening is... Quinn wants to move something else into that effect. So you'll move that into it and you'll give that thing negative 5,000, which might be enough to kill it, especially if you've got other uh, ways to do negative effects, which this deck has plenty of ways to do it. Sort of like a little synergy in there that, that works really nicely. Queen, Quinn is kind of one of those uh, Quinn essential pieces that you could use. Um, but what I ended up, the main reasoning why I ended up swapping out of green green or black black as my assist line and adding white into it really was yuki um in these types of decks you kind of need yuki aside from yuki's ability to um you know if the lanes open like let's say you open something and then you kill the thing in it and then you move it into the lane that now has an a uh what do you call it a uh, virus into it which is nice the real thing is being able to vanilla things with this yuki is really helpful there's a lot a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, signies that are 3,000 powered and gets a boost under certain conditions. And being able to vanilla those so they die in the the uh, lane that you put the um, virus into is actually quite strong. Um, so that's the main reasoning. The other reasoning, again, is Exia. Exia is really good when it's flipped over and then on your opponent's turn reflipped back. It defies a lot of souls, it defies a lot of abilities that are on attack abilities. So Exe is quite strong in that scenario. And this is set up so that way you can put an Exe and Exe on the field. It doesn't work quite with Quinn when Quid, Quinn's flipped over, because when you flip it back, it doesn't trigger its ability. Um, but it's good to protect Quinn until the next turn, and that's sort of something we see in this deck as well, is we're protecting some things until the next turn. Uh, which are like some of your stronger stuff, like Phalaris if it needs to get 20,000 in there. Caesar, because then Caesar will allow you to get Assassin more than once. Um, actually, you only get Assassin more than once because it's an enter ability. Excuse me. Um, and then Nanashi, because Nanashi actually gets more powerful the more times you use it, right? So the first time it kills uh, 3,000 at 3,000, and the next time it does 6,000 and a 6,000, which is really strong, plus it's an action ability, so it's actually a really good coin usage for. Uh, and the deck really is lacking other ways to use coins. I think Nanashi's the only way to use coins other than um, with this uh, Lilith that is in the <laughs> is just there for basically life burst, but that's fine. I mean, the goal is hopefully to use this Nanashi twice, which leaves you with one more coin left to use, and the Lilith can, can use that. Um, and we're not, like, trying to jam-pack a lot of early coins into this deck, because, again, we only get two coins from the start, so there's no real usage for that. Um, the rest of the deck is pretty obvious, other than the, the, the moving around. You end up with uh, sort of just good stuff black cards, We've got Caesar, we do mill ourselves a little bit in this, and we enter charge a little bit, so it is kind of makes sense to have this as a way to give Assassin. Not to mention negative 3,000 will take 8,000s and make them 5,000 power, so you can Assassin through that at that point. And there's also so many ways to switch um, 
to make like you know lane swapping happen there's also other ways to do minimizing so uh caesar just ends up becoming a relatively good card with that type of stuff Falaris is just always a good card, but also good because anything that's in that 3,000 lane basically dies to it, so you can always guarantee a vanish. That includes remembers, by the way, if there's a remember in that center. Um, Baphomet mills yourself, gets buff. That's pretty good. Um, Iona is specifically pretty good in this deck, especially if you end up in a scenario where you can't easily kill the thing after swapping it with Quinn. Um, as long as you swap with Quinn, you're also able to trigger Iona no matter what. So there's potential ways to do three like lane clears during the attack phase, which can be quite strong on its own. Um, that's because whenever this attacks, you can play black, black. If you do, you vanish target signing on the opponent's field. That's uh, power is different than its originally listed power. Um, the other abilities are kind of like meh, whatever. Um, they're kind of nice that you can reflip this and force the signi to attack in front of it, I guess. Uh, and then if you have ways to to deal to like move things around that can be kind of cool um but it's like eh, it's most most more or less uh nana she is just a breakout star here you've got the coins for it you've got the ability to protect it so you can do negative six thousand negative six thousand um plus negative six thousand plus negative five thousand is, is a ton uh especially if you do negative six thousand negative five thousand and negative three thousand you're killing everything right um so nana she the actual signi is pretty good which means that we're going to go to four ogana in this deck uh, again, four Ogana is the right move here just because it does stack well with Nanashi itself. Um, normally you see usually three Ogana as the, the most, but this is this is pretty good with it. Uh, again, you've got some just good stuff here. Anna Mirage is pretty good. Kaisumi, we're actually using for the ability here, but a 12,000 power in level two is also quite strong. Uh, and then the rest is, is pretty normal. Toko is our last version of moving things. The reason why it gets the nod over more Kaiosumi is because it's a level 1, and just level 1s are easier to use in general. The buff is fine. It's just fine. It's not, like, amazing. We don't really have any easy access to Lancer in this. I would like to add more Lancer to this if I could, uh, just because it does help with the negative 3,000, etc., um, but nah, it's, it's, it's just a, it's just utility here that also has a life burst. Uh, but again, Yuki is the, the star of the deck here to, to turn things off and really make the glue of everything else work here. Uh, there's even combos with like Yuki and Iona, you know, Yuki something's power away and then you end up with the Iona and then you can, you can kill it. I guess that doesn't make any sense because you gotta actually have the, uh, power listed on there to do it, so you can't Yuki it. But, um... Anyways, yep, yeah, that's the deck. I think it's actually quite strong and plays differently than most, you know, green, black, mid-range decks that are currently in the format. Give it a try. Let me know how you guys think about it. And as always, I hope you flip a life first.